Hey, Mr. Richard Bicker. Alright, let's put some gloves on and hopefully this will be our test. We're not going to end up with a water balloon at the end of it. Hey, Jared, Greg, and Enrico the Kid, Edward Galvin, uh, Mr. Watts from New Zealand. Uh, as you can see, we have a glorious air conditioning unit. Whew, that was hard work. I uh, may have, you guys may have already seen the video of me putting it in, where I nearly break my back, blow a calf muscle, all that sort of stuff. Exciting things. So, uh, best of all, it's cool in here. It's 26, 27 centigrade, just in case you're confused. I mean, hey, who doesn't run an air conditioner at 27 for Fahrenheit? Unless, of course, you've got a reverse cycle. That would make sense. Uh, it's not that loud at the moment, no, it's actually quite quiet. Um, any loudness that may be picked up would be just from the uh, direct airflow cutting into the mic. But for me, being partially deaf, really can't hear it at all. Certainly much better than uh, the old one I used to have. If you've been following me for a couple of years now, you remember I had a machine in there that uh, rattled and just carried on. Worse than my um, fume extractor, in fact. So yeah, this is quite a nice change. Hey, Brandon C. Jared, uh, you got the KiCad. All right, well, best of luck with learning how to use KiCad. I'm sure yeah, once you get used to it, it won't be quite so bad. I suppose you start out with schematic capture and then you build your board off, off the schematic capture. At least that's my understanding of it. So let's see how we go. We do have a couple of other things that we got. Uh, finally received my 40 millimeter long. What's this one? Ah, this is the Pendelope for the iPhones made by Wera, and it's 40 millimeter long. Much nicer than the other one I got. And also, I got the triple zero 40 millimeter, blah, 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 40 millimeter long Phillips from Wera. Now I've still got to wait for my double zero Phillips to come along, but we should be able to use this one today. So it's good to see them turn up. I mean, you can see the massive difference between the two. I mean, this is the long one that I've been using. This is the new one. And that should make a bit of a difference in how difficult it is to do the screws on the iPhones. That's it. it wasn't a problem with the MacBook, but the iPhones, it was definitely a pain. Let's see. Fun time. Major snowstorm. Heavy snow taking down tree limbs and power lines. Ah, yeah, that's brutal. Ah, uh, Jan Zimmy, yeah, the uh, Lewis getting a quarter of a million a year off YouTube thing. I, I've vomited a few times. Uh, I'm sure he's very deserving of it. I still vomited. Uh, let's go to the overhead. Uh, whoops, yeah, I've got to still clean up my bench. I better fix up this iPhone 7 before I go any further. Drill bits. Good old 10mm spade bit. Better put that somewhere safe. Uh, this drill bit here is a bit of a nemesis to me. Um, this one's taken some serious chunks of flesh off me. I had it in a drill press and I was, um, what was I doing? I was trying to put holes in acrylic, uh, PV, uh, what do you call it, plexiglass. And I had the assembly in a vise and everything, but it still wasn't enough. And this thing just grabbed what I had and then my hand was holding the um, vice that I had it in and sure enough it just sucked my thumb into there and just took a whopping great big nice slice out of me so yeah this one this one's tasted blood so I've got to be careful with it because it tries to get me every time it's a 13 mil bit from what I remember Lewis replies to that and said it was BS yeah okay yeah sure he's probably just um pretending that he really doesn't get that much money. I mean, you start declaring to people that you get that sort of money and people are going to come out of the woodwork even worse than before, asking for favours, freebies, all sorts of things. Everybody wants freebies. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, that's a bit of the screw that I had to grind off with my Dremel for the air conditioner. It was holding the angle bracket to the back. 
Uh, better put this thing back together. This iPhone 7 suffered the indignity of a very bad smash. Uh, it's bad enough that this battery was new. I put it in not too long ago. And it's caused all the um, sheer ripple lines over it. But I found someone else has been into this before me. And my microscope camera is not on. So we'll just wait for that. And someone did the long damage on this one. Now underneath there is a uh, touch sense line, um, activation line or something. So, yep, I just told the customer, no, nope, stop it. They can just get a new phone. They smashed this one up so badly. It just wasn't worth repairing, in my opinion. At least, yeah, not for what they were doing. Anyway, so, I mean, they've broken all sorts of things off this. So I'm going to partially reassemble this. Or really, I should say, I'm going to reassemble this. Put it aside. As far as I understand, they have gifted it to me. But I'm still putting it aside for three months for them to change their mind. Uh, because that does happen. It's not malicious or anything. It's just sometimes people sort of go, Oh, whoops, actually, I did want that. Oh, first time using this. This is the triple zero Phillips. Why aren't you... Because you're a tri-wing. A random tri-wing there? Wow. Oh, well. You bought a crap load of caps and doctors and dads, 10k, pots, sensors, everything for $25. Jared, where did you get, did you get what those from uh, one of those uh, surplus electronic supply stores? Uh, I've got boxes of stuff from those people. One thing I found, if it is a surplus supply store, I got done over with them once. Uh, what happened? Oops, I forgot to put the... I ordered a particular type of surface mount uh, buzzer off them. This is back when I was doing my model aircraft manufac manufacturing electronics stuff. And I had to put a lot of effort into finding the right buzzers for the job because they had to be a particular size. They had to have a particular type of resonating chamber so that it would be very loud for the amount of current I was putting, yeah, just all sorts of things like that. And I saw that this electronic surplus place did have them, and they had them in a reel of a thousand X factory sort of thing. And I thought, beauty, I thought I'll take those. And I ordered them in, and sure enough, the, they arrive and you know, I look at them and they look like the right things. But then, after I'd used up about the first 30 of them, the reel changed. They had spliced the right ones on the outer rim of the wheel, of the uh, reel of parts, and then on the inner rim, or for all the rest of it, for the next 970 or so, were all crap ones. And yeah, fortunately I managed to claim back on that, got my money back. But I was pretty aggro, because it actually ruined my manufacturing run for that. I guess I should know better than to pick up surplus parts. Should have known it was too good to be true, because the buzzers were usually... They were LG ones or something like that, some good brand ones. And they usually retail for around about $2.50 each in quantities of 250 and I was picking them up for about 25 cents a piece. How's the aircon? Hey, Bill. Uh, very nicely, thank you, Bill. Uh, it's almost like I'm back in Tasmania or something. I've only got it on 26, 27 at the moment, but it's a world of difference. A her just amazing world of difference. Should soothe the muscular pains I'm going to have from putting it in. Oh, Jared, well, done well then. 
Uh, it, was, it was my folly to be thinking that I could get a whole bunch of very good parts for such a cheap price. Live and learn. Live and learn. Hey, Froslin. What is it? Freezing, but you got the sun. That's a pretty good combination. I'll take that. Alright. I know you guys in about eight weeks time you'll be fighting off those bushfires coming down oh you won't be in your area but those in Sydney area copping it from the Blue Mountains as the Blue Mountains turn into the Ash Mountains I think the scariest thing about the Blue Mountains is because you've got all the eucalypts down there and those things just love to explode So I really wouldn't want to be caught in that sort of place. What am I doing here? Oh, Bill, this is obviously that uh, iPhone 7 I was talking to you about. For some reason I can't seem to get my tri-wing drive on there. There we go. We haven't even gotten started on the iPhone 6 yet. Okay, that's good. Hey, UB40. Not getting much of a buzz watching Lewis and his drones. Stay cool. uh, I guess they're having fun. But yeah, I know what you mean. It's a bit like when I watch, you know, you watch your favourite TV show or something like that, and they change the format of it for a special edition episode or something, and you pretty much rage over that. You're like, oh, come on! You made me wait a week for this episode, and you're not even going to give me what I'm here for. Hey, Mark. Ernest McCullum's here. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, Bill, this is a long screw, long screw phone. So as you can see, it's it's had a little bit of a rough life. So I'll see how it goes. Uh, as far as I know, they've given up on it. We've decided not to go ahead with anything. Anyway, let's get this six that I'm supposed to fix. Nothing fancy on this. Like I said, this is certainly no high quality Jason or Jessa stream with phones and repairs. This is just your typical I'm um, a hack job phone repair person changing screens at budget prices. Which is actually a lie because I charge quite a premium for screen changes here. The power of having a captive market. You can. Mm. Sounds like someone's got the motocross bike, four stroke. Probably about 500cc. Hey, JR. Yeah, Bill, I sort of wasn't too keen on them trying to get it fixed up. I mean, it was only that one line, like you said. But uh, I worry about all the other damage that's probably in it. Okay, I've never worked on this one before. Looks pretty pristine. The interesting, the battery adhesive has come up, but it does look like an original battery. A bit of liquid sort of marking there. Sometimes I've found, even pristine ones, they've got fingerprints on the SIM tray and the speaker. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Ah, this is so much easier using the 40mm one. Though I do need to magnetise it, do I? so much easier. I think I'll just change the camera a bit. Just give me a moment. Come on. I need to have a camera adjust mode where it reverses everything for me. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, here we go. We got we got the um, Rossman evangelism versus Rossman anti-evangelism. It should be fun. Please do continue to create drama on the channel. I was talking to my wife last night and discussing, you know, channels and successes or failures and things like that. And it does seem that having a strong opinion on things is one of the 
a key way of getting a lot of subscribers and things like that. And unfortunately for me, I don't tend to have the strongest of opinion on many things, at least not relating to this sort of work. I mean, unless it's things like animal abuse, then I will pretty much go out and violate quite a few laws in order to bring people to justice on that. Okay. But beyond that, I'm a little bit too sort of like, oh, well, you know, whatever and carry on with whatever I want to be doing with my life rather than trying to tell people how to run their lives. And I don't have a strong hate for X, Y or Z message either. Like I'm far too blasé. I mean, it's like with Apple, I mean, come on, I, I could be sitting here saying I hate Apple or whatever, but the point is I, I use a lot of Apple products. I never used to. Funnily enough, it was only because of all this repairing stuff that I ended up using an iPhone and then using a MacBook and now using an iMac. Although my own personal computer is my main workstations are Linux still. I'm very much more sort of like, well, whatever I can use to get the job done. I'm also not really big into team sports or anything like that. <sighs> Just Fox Hunt engineers leaving the mark. Ah, the fingerprints, yeah. Hey, hi, and Tech and Donald Elliott and Mr. Neil Lambs here. How's the best tech? Well, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm doing all right. You might have to ask Dave James directly if you want to find out that. Yeah, we've got screw dislodged. What? There's no screws in this? Well, I may not have opened it, but someone else must have. Oh, that or this really failed the quality assurance because there is not a single screw. Yeah, okay, someone else has been here. Dun dun dun! Shonky Brothers have been at it again. Yep. Nice job, guys. Come on. Six screws you could have put in. You could have even pulled the tab off. No. Gotta keep it shonky. Gotta do it fast. Gotta do it cheap. And when the customer comes back, tell them it was their fault. They must have dropped it. They must have looked at it funny. They must have held it wrong. Because that's what Apple says. Okay. Well, everyone gets to see who I buy my stuff from. Yeah, well, there's no shame in that. I'm just realising I need a black iPhone 6. And, of course, it's a refurbished screen. Let's see. I shouldn't have messed with this. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've sometimes had issues, bad stock, things like that, but I will admit that these people have always been very good at resolving those issues for me promptly without any problems. Uh, there's a better get some screws. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> Let's see, iPhone 6 display success. 6 plus body, 6s body, 6s plus display. Oh, come on, where's my 6 display screws? Must be over here. This is why you should put things back after you've used them. Because I actually went back to where. I'm supposed to have all these particular containers, and let me guess, it's probably on the desk. Yeah, mm-hmm. Someone left it on the desk. Hey, Southwest Kitty. No. Alright, if you are in Australia and you want these Wearer screwdrivers that I finally found, I got these from RS 
Australia or RS Electronics Australia. Pretty sure the website now is just RS Australia. So you can definitely get the PH00, the PH00. I would like the 00. The 00 I think is a little bit small for this these medium size iPhone screws. But certainly the uh, Pentalobe is a nice one to have. It's much nicer than the awful Weha ones. Weha, if you're listening, which you're not, but if you're ever listening, can you please fix up the quality of the handles on these things? They're absolute junk. The funny thing is the plastic feels like it's good quality, but the form factor and the assembly is just poor. And the shaft is too th narrow, too thin. Hey, Klavik. Never can say that name right. Welcome from Norway. Slightly cooler weather here now with the air conditioner installed. If I had solar panels on, I'd probably consider running this air conditioner at about 22, just to give me that true winter experience. Context being winter here in Charles Towers. Oh my goodness, why can't I get you in? I think the problem here is that I've got the triple zero driver and it really wants to be a double zero. What do you, you're the single zero? If there is one thing I do have a problem with these drivers is the fact that there's, it's quite hard to de determine which driver is which at times. Yeah, there's no clear markings on it to say I'm a Phillips zero or Phillips one or whatever. But it's a minor inconvenience. Hey, the Aussie geek, good to see you. Yeah, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one with the Weha complaint. Yeah, if they were twenty or even thirty dollar drivers for the set, I wouldn't complain. I go, okay, I can feel that the actual driving element is pretty good quality, but the rest, it's like, uh, it's junk. Just, you pick it up and you do not get, hey, this is quality type feel. You pick up the Wero ones and you kind of feel, yeah, that's pretty good. The only thing off the Wero ones I worry about is this plastic inlay here. I am worried it will uh, tend to degrade and pick out over time, but I'm not sure. I don't know what the plastic is. I suppose someone like AVE would know just by looking at it. But we're not all gifted like AVE with plastic knowledge and language. Okay, you're sitting a little funny there. But yeah, it's good to know that I'm not the only one a bit gripey over the Weeha drivers. Hey, Steve K. Greg, thank you, yes. I think the other thing I have to do is I have to be a little more cheery in my videos. I suspect that with when you're a bit lacking in that... Uh, oh, hang on, just wait a second. Yes. Oh, cool, bring it in. <laughs> Sorry, it's on the cat food dish. It was on the cat food dish? No, I picked it up with the cat oh, food. Oh, right, yeah. It was next to the cat food dish. I think this is rhinoceros beetle, and it's actually going through a molt phase. Is it dead or alive? Uh, it kind of looks alive. Should I put it back where I found it? Well, but I was worried the ants were going to get it. Yeah, it probably needs to go... Let's stick this here. People are going to go, oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, I thought... <laughs> be no, 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 it's all good. Um, I'll have a check, but actually, let's see if it is. It, if it has died, it's only just recent. Yeah, it's, alive, but it's still squishy. Yeah, it's even got a fair bit of warmth in it, and it's very warm, uh, very heavy. Yeah, let's terrify the people. Uh, funnily enough, the head is up here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> let's put it under the microscope and scare the living daylights out of half the world's population. Alright folks, so you want your brains chewed out, stick one of these in your ear. Don't oh, look. Don't <laughs> Sorry? I said don't let the yeah. <laughs> yeah. For some reason this chap isn't really active. I'm fairly sure this is a rhinoceros beetle larvae, but yeah, it looks dead for some reason. 
No, it's definitely not. Bleh. But it looks like it was preparing to go into a malt, or maybe it is about to go into a malt, and it's just into a um, what do you call it? Some sort of um, stasis mode. Yeah. So if anyone who's seen the movie, oh, what is that damn movie? Stormship Troopers. Well, you can see where they get all their props from. Yeah, I'll put this guy back 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 in the yard under some mulch. And he might come up all right. It needs flux, yeah. Let's <laughs> see. Uh, uh, CTPC 201910. What is it? Uh, 12th. Okay. First, we've got. Oh, we've still got to do the earpiece and everything. Justin Brown. Oh, no. I think you picked the perfect moment. I'm going to drop another degree. Alien pupae, yes. It certainly is. I said, fairly sure there's a rhinoceros beetle. It's most definitely... Well, I shouldn't say most definitely because I am not a uh, insectivore... Uh, insectivore, jeez. I'm not an insect expert. But you do get a lot of those sort of things and people think they're witchetty grubs, particularly when they're in their earlier phase and they've got a quite a light, light white look about them. And they cook them up, for trying to experiment with eating f grubs. And it is really not recommended. You really do want to make sure, if you're going to go eat witchetty grubs, you make sure you get witchetty grubs, not flipping rhinoceros beetle things. Big difference in flavor from what I've heard. One will make you vomit pretty much instantly. The other is just makes you squirm. When you think about it, we do kind of already eat a lot of insects. I mean, the things that you eat out of the ocean. Bugs, lobsters, prawns, shrimp. All that sort of stuff. People have no trouble eating it. Suddenly when it comes out of the dirt, or the land, it's like, ew, gross. You want to be cheery, be like those stereotypical floggers and like, Hi guys, hey, Paul, Leff and Daniel's here today, we are going to fix an iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that kind of pains me to put that sort of energy into these things. I mean, I'm not trying to be all... Or you've got to go the other way, and you've got to literally be crying from the outset. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but there's a um, food mukbang guy, what's his name, uh... Nicardo Avocado or something and dear goodness gracious every single episode is some sort of false drama and he's crying and everyone or is uh, honestly I, I I can only hope it's just his actual uh, acting persona sort of thing but you can never quite tell and if the amount of junk food that they put into their bodies who knows maybe the brains have actually been modified A zero effect. Cicada. Um, no, I'm not sure if it's a cicada pupae. I'll have to have a look. Because we do get a lot of cicadas here, but they usually burrow themselves quite a bit deeper. The other possibility is that one actually came from um, a wood log. Damn it. There was something not quite what's going on with this tip it's a little bit squared off that's the problem I've got here and I think that's why the triple zeros uh, the double zeros are better set it fits but it doesn't give me a lot of tip into it why have they squared that off so much I guess maybe for extremely flat ones well, we'll see how the double O is when it gets here. Maybe it's squared off like that to stop you talking it too much. Like people who love to destroy iPhones with their long screw damage. Hey, Brass Cog Studios? What sort of uh, work do you do in your studios? 
I guess I could Google and find out. I'm just kind of curious that you carry that name with you there. I just realized something. There's a bend in the chassis and I haven't even bothered to look at it. And it's a complex bend as well. It bends one way on one side and the other way on the other side. Yep, I think I'm going to have to wait till this, uh, the double O turns up. We'll just use this one in the meantime. Stay in the ground for 11 years for surfacing, yeah. Thing is, that one doesn't look anything like it's actually morphed enough. But so we do, like I said, we've got the witch grubs, we've got the rhino beetles and things like that, which also have a pupae stage like that. So, and we definitely you know, have the cicadas everywhere, all the time. Okay, let's see how this looks once the screen is down. Yeah, no, you, yeah, no. You're gonna need a bit of work. Okay, let's see if we can do this. There's a bend on that side, going that way, and then when you flip it over, it's also going that way. But because it's flipped over, it's in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna have to take that screen off and adjust the chassis a little bit. Fortunately, being a six, it's a uh, fairly soft metal and all that. It just would have been nice if I'd remembered to do that first. Tardigrade. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger than a tardigrade. Those things are amazing. I see they utilised them in the more recent Star Trek series. All of a sudden, it's the big cool thing to know all things about. All nerds must know everything about tardigrades now. Hey, Donald, it's brand new, which is probably why it's quiet and cool. I had a previous one that I got rid of about a year and a half ago and that was uh, that was about 10, 12 years old at least. Uh, this one here could end up causing a break in the metal above the button but that's not really a big problem. This one here, naturally it's over the sim. It's not a big bend so I can probably get away I can get away without taking the main board out because it certainly can, can be any worse than someone sitting on it again and we'll use my $250 tool here I should sell these it cost me $5 to make, $250 to sell Decent a bit of profit there. Hey, Rob Brown. Yes, Johnny Chang. A bit, uh, a bit S shaped. The S shaped. If you uh, look at it cr cross sectional wise. So what are we going for? It's just on the back end of that sim tray. Now the fun thing is I can only compress it on that one side because I've got to do the opposite on the other side so you don't want to end up compounding that one uh, that's not the, in which case I might just stick the shims here and that should prevent things getting out of control we're going to use a plastic push down rather than the metal one I wonder how many people get the whole $250 snide remark I just made then. Anyone who does iPhone back glass screen replacements and is on Facebook should know about that one.
Hey Ainsley, uh, yeah the mangoes will be starting to come out. They're probably just at the flowering season soon here. Doesn't take long though. Alright, here we go. Very gentle. Like I said, this is not a big bend, this one, but it's in the wrong kind of direction. Metalwork experience helps a bit here. It's a bit inconvenient, this tool, for the fact that I've got to you know, undo the butterflies every time. But given that I only use it maybe once or twice a week. I suppose the extra 15 seconds it takes me, I can sort of get away with. Yeah, that hasn't really come out good enough yet. Looks like it's on the other side a bit too. The camera is kind of getting in the way there. I can see it pushing inwards here, and that's not a good thing. Oops. Can you grow mangrove from seed? Yes, you most certainly can. In fact, usually you spend a fair bit of time in the yard going around yanking up the damn seedlings that pop up from the fallen mangoes. If the conditions are right, you should easily be able to grow it from seed. You should just have to bury the whole fruit shouldn't have to take the, you shouldn't take the seed out of the fruit at least not that I'm aware of yeah Rob I saw that I saw they dropped it to 49 and it's some dreadful commenting going on in that whole thing okay ah zero effect at least I understood what you were saying Yeah, all right, we're back to straight now with that. Yeah, let's see. That's pretty much dead on. I'm not going to get much better than that without stuffing up something. Now we've got to do this kick. And as I said, it's in the opposite direction. Fortunately, it's on the battery side. So we may lose a few milliamp hour capacity overall. But that's okay. Ainsley, I think it really depends on the type of fruit and where you are. Like if you've got a plant that isn't really native to that sort of environment, then yeah, it's probably going to be quite difficult to get it to um, pop up from seed. Probably just not enough conditions to convince it that it's in the right place to worth seeding. Holy damn, that's a actually a pretty nasty kick, that. But if you've got something where they are pretty much grown from, then you, know, you should normally be able to get from seed, kind of like avocado and things like that. Hope you're doing all right today, Rob. Hope things get a bit better for you. Okay. Uh, we eyeball down. I can't believe I actually spent a hundred and how much did I spend? About fifty bucks, I think. Fifty US dollars for a, a G2 clone press that didn't end up working anyway. Passed out after two hours. Whew. That's not too bad, I guess, for us. Uh, Johnny Chang, we do have some very interesting life in Australia. I think combination of the climate and the isolation, certainly. Well, it's not perfect, but I don't think I want to risk pushing that one any further. So it's um, it's it's going to be good enough for the job. If you start fiddling around with this too much, you'll s create. Uh, working hardness and then you'll get fatigue and then you'll get cracks and then you'll snap the thing 
Feeling a bit better, but cranky. Yeah, well, hope that passes for your sake. Yeah, definitely planting the whole fruit is the idea, because obviously that's its starting medium. And a lot of the time the fruit itself, uh, the seed has, you know, often has small tendrils into the fruit. And so that probably helps with its initial root system. As the fruit decomposes, it creates the liquid fertilizer. And the root system's already straight away tapped into it. It can be difficult for some plants that may require external um, fungus or an ex you know, some other thing that's in the ground to trigger it. It's a bit like in Australia, a lot of the native plants require fire now to get them to uh, seed or to sp uh, get started. And without fire, they just will not do it. But it is an interesting sort of thing to look back on because I do wonder, prior to, I don't know, um, a say a 100,000 years or so ago, um, fire, while it would have been a moderate portion of Australia, I do wonder whether it was as much a portion as when Australia was first settled by the current indigenous and they used fire as a um, medium for you know, hunting and things like that. And that would have changed the landscape rather dramatically. Especially too back then, Australia probably wasn't anywhere near as dry and volatile as it is now. And I mean, we did have megafauna, like very large marsupials, things like that. They're nowhere to be seen now. Okay, how's that feeling? It's still not perfect, but it's certainly it's just that bottom corner keeps wanting to jump out. But I am not going to push my luck on that. I'll just tell the person, you know, it's, uh, it has been bent. Keep it in a case and you'll be fine. Yeah, this pentalab is really nice. Definitely worth the money. It does feel a little bit ridiculous when you pay 20 plus dollars for a driver, but uh, you know, when it feels good like this, it's worth it. Let's see if it even turns on. Yep, there we go. I guess I better put that out of the, out of the way so that people don't see what's on the customer's thing. Let's have a look at the gloves. Well, there's a little bit of work up there but it's certainly not a swimming pool so we might just uh, knock down to 24 maybe I'll blow it down onto me a bit more run the high fan hmm. but certainly it's 100 times better than it was the other day let's see Looking good. Right, very glad I didn't show that on screen. That would have been difficult to explain. Okay. I don't need a manicure. I don't have fingernails to start with, so. And this, oh, hello, what have we got here? What's this thing for? Is that a camera block, is it? Where do you get your gloves and what type are they and do they protect against ESD? Uh, they most certainly do not protect against ESD. If anything, they probably induce a bit of ESD. They are... Let's see. They're just generic ones I get at the local supermarket. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is it? Hercules, Tough Task, Night Trial, 75 box. I buy them when they're on half price specials, usually around about $4.50 for a box. Is Australia mostly tropical climate? It's uh, semi-tropical into subtropical. It depends whether you're talking land mass or population. 
Because in terms of population, then most people are subtropical. Uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Temperate. Temperate's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I think this person is going to get another one of those. Yeah, maybe I can stick it back on. Using my crap Asus Wi-Fi laptop. Damn Wi-Fi, it seems nearly dead. Going to change it. Oh, right. Wade says it's mostly hell, yeah. New Zealand definitely is a nicer place. I know, I know. People are going to hate me for saying that, but... Honestly. New Zealand is... I mean, for goodness sake, they have elves there. How can it not be a better place? Damn it, I've got a fingerprint on there somehow. I oh don't know, this thing seems kind of... It seems slightly devious to me, but hey, transfer it across. Hey, Rodrigo. Okay, that's done. Throw it in the bin. Put on a new pair of gloves. Uh. Now, I'm kind of curious what I'm going to attack next. Okay. It's getting a little hard to get those on. Look, I mean... Yeah, the air conditioner isn't going to make things perfect in here during summer, but it is going to at least make it that my working hours will be greatly improved. You know, rather than only being able to work from, say, 9 o'clock at night through to midnight, I should be able to work from, well, pretty much most hours, except perhaps, say, midday to 3 o'clock. Just finished watching the Breaking Bad movie. Ah, don't ruin it for me. Um, started watching a little bit of it last night and then I need to go to sleep but yeah I'll get through that anyone ruins it for me I'll be upset Australia is in the tropic of, tropic of Capricorn don't you mean I think you mean Capricorn tropic tropic of Capricorn where is the other phones I was looking at okay Oh yeah. Uh, Bill, if you're still around. Now, I don't know how many people have these, but um, a lot of people... Damn it, where's my... There we go, that's what I was after. A lot of people, when you're starting out with these things, sometimes you make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, when you know maybe you didn't have to make the mistake it becomes your uh, shame board and this here is my shame board because I'm fairly sure I can't be guaranteed but I'm fairly sure that if I hadn't have botched with this I might have been able to get the data off but I did botch with it and I never made it better than what it was so every now and then I come back to this shame board to have a look and see if maybe I can recover it because I'm probably just making it worse every time Hey Colin Bonner, oh thank you for making yourself known, I appreciate that So I guess the first thing I'm going to do here is try and reacquaint myself with what actually is not happening on this board It is missing quite a lot of things. Well, Rodrigo, I do agree that breaking is an excellent way of learning. Just unfortunately, it shouldn't be happening to customer farm boards. Well, or my own phone that I just... Um, oh, jeez. Nope, 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 nope. Someone asking something of me.
This is A8, iPhone 6. Yeah, it shouldn't be on customer boards, and that was... To be fair, at the time, there was no one else around. Okay, we've got 13 milliamps, so it doesn't have a short. I think it just boot loops this one. The worst thing I think now is that I probably. Uh, the person's dead. Or. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. Uh, the person's either dead, or they would have long forgotten their passcode anyway. I can only hope that maybe if I look back over the conversation that I can find the passcode. Hey Rob Brown. Oh, what a very settled lady. I don't know why I'm saying hello again. Turn off the power to that. As far as I remember, this was liquid damage to start with. And there was liquid damage around the CPU V core gen area. That's the main thing I seem to remember. Uh, now it's well and truly just damaged. Yeah, with Checkmate, we're just going to have to wait for people to generate turnkey solutions for that for the most part. Hopefully something just something that just fits in 3U. And you can see all where the liquid damage has been. I'm fairly sure I've ended up having to replace a lot of that. Backlight's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I do seem to recall a lot of liquid damage on this one. Okay. Okay, by the looks of it, it just pretty much sits at 90, 100 milliamp, and that's it. There's no variance, nothing. So it's not a short, it's some sort of communication issue. Or maybe, a, I don't know, a NAND issue. I'm not sure. Anyway, so yeah, it just sits at 100 milliamp. Oh, Ansley, yeah, I made plenty of mistakes. A lot of them I try not to admit. <laughs> hey, Barraf Zuin. So I'm at a bit of a loss even to where to start at this point. I'm just sort of going to go back over now. That base pan CPU is probably completely botched up. A lot of this maybe I should try and redo potentially. Now, oh, what have I taken out here? Okay, that's backlight driver. What on earth did I take out? I thought that was. Time to bring up the board view. Yeah, it's an I2C line missing, something like that. Well, I always thought that was more of a 40 to 70 milliamp one. Okay, I'm just loading up the iPhone 6 board view. It's embarrassing that I can't even remember what half these chips are for. Oh wait, yep, even looked at the wrong one. Da, da, da. Okay, so your strobe driver, okay, that's not a problem, that's just camera light. Okay, and your backlight driver. So yeah, neither of those should be stopping it from booting. But yeah, there's a tremendous amount of liquid damage in here. I think I might just give it a wash over with the isopropylene to start with so I can determine what's legit or not. 90 viewers, eh, no, that's actually pretty good. Like I said, considering that most people are probably asleep in the States and not yet awake in Europe. So yeah, for Australia time, that's pretty good.
Okay, we'll check the ITC lines. Let's see if anything's amiss there. Here's my paper towel gone. I swear at times my wife will come in here and steal my rolls of paper towel, which makes me wonder whether I'm getting lead poisoning. Ah. Yep. See, she definitely did steal it. Please, what? Well, please, bro, came. Tranquil the cat? What are you talking about? Hey, Michael Olsen. Yeah, Zero Effect. I think that's what I was doing. If you look at the other side, you'll see I even took off audio I see and a bunch of other things. You can see it's a bit hard to tell to make out, but uh, that says shame. So, yep, shame board. Looks like I've shorted the car, the... Yeah, that's just liquid damage. The more I look at this, the more I see everything's just liquid damage to hell. And out of focus as a bonus. Ah, greetings from Poland. So Europe's waking up. The reason why I'm cleaning it down right now is simply because there's a lot of accumulated dust and junk from the years that it's been sitting around. Now look, there's a part sitting in the speaker drive is gone. Oh, where did you go? Why are you gone? Well, that, that could explain some things, but not everything. It is pretty scary just how much damage there is there. Maybe I should put in the ultrasonic at some point. Cats did it, yeah. Thermal cam's not going to do me any good because there's no short. But I think we'll put that part back. It's kind of needed. That's U1400. But yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, that's... No, that's not needed. That's just for the speakers. Alright, my bad. I was thinking it was something else. Yeah, a lot of the RF bits have been knocked off. Wow. What? Try to. Looks like this is a lot worse than I remembered. <laughs> Substantially worse than I remember. Okay, I can start to hear the air conditioner whine now. I'm guessing I just knocked those off simply because they didn't look good. You know, this trouble is, with this board, pretty much everything needs to be knocked off by the looks of it. This may yet stay a shame board for many years yet.
Hmm. Uh, let's have a look at the I2C lines. Yeah, Jared, um, it is a uh, single microscope view. We'll do. That's what I was saying about KiCad before, is that it does tend to be a little bit... Yeah. A little bit quirky, but then EDA software, as a general rule, is always quirky. It's a case of getting one that's got fewer quirks. Uh, digging around, I2C on the iPhone 6, I'm trying to remember where the resistors are. A couple of them hang out, but let's see. I know a couple hang out under the frame. Take off Mason and Cumulus. Yeah. I'll check the I2Cs first before I go pulling off Mason and Cumulus. Okay. I should see if I've even got one V8. Let's see if I've got any rails coming up. Hey, Bill. Let's see, what's Bill suggesting? By the way, for anyone who is in Australia and actually has a phone that needs fixing and things like that, then I do strongly suggest you send it off to Bill of... Uh, a1 Mobiles, is it A1 Mo I always say A1 Mobile Repairs, but I know it's not. Bill, are you able to put up your uh, link to your website, please? So that people can send their stuff to you? Because Bill is very good at what he does. He charges a proper price, too. He's not cheap and nasty. He charges what he needs to charge to keep his store open and everyone happy. And believe me, your customers will be much happier for sending it to him. So, yeah. Hey, Arafi. Let's see, what's Bill say? Yeah, la, la, la. Could be under Touch IC or Chestnut. Reflow and then put in Ultrasonic. Thank you, Bill. I greatly appreciate that. Yeah, I'm generally not in the business of openly recommending things to other people but uh, Bill's definitely one that I will gladly suggest people go to. He's saved a lot of things of my own so maybe I'm biased. Stockholm? No. That flux looks a little dodgy. My Stockholm generator, I think, is a little dodgy there too. It seems to be sitting a bit off, off center. I mean, certainly I'll fix what I can, but. If I'm serious about not messing up a particular job, you know, if it's something that I don't feel like I've got the experience in, then absolutely, unquestionably, I send it off. These are the union repair tweezers, the ones with the extra ground down tips. They are legitimately useful.
bit of a weird contrast. My hands are boiling, but my back of my neck's being kept quite cool. It certainly looks like it's been r running quite a long time while it was liquid damaged. I mean, you can tell by the fact that all the one sides of the caps are corroded away. Whereas if it's just general off, um, the phone isn't running or the computer isn't running, then the corrosion tends to be even on both sides. But when you get corrosion on the one side of the cap, that means it was um, immersed while it was on. And it's basically it's basically an electro um, electro plating or electro reduction process. Uh, what are you? In the middle of the NFC envelope, two caps. Uh, o two o three USB rexed no, not important. Uh, I even took off the Wi Fi cap. Yeah, this is, this was obviously a train wreck to start with. Thank you, Graham, as always. Let's see if we've got any change after the flux and boil. Well, we're boot looping now. We're getting up to 160 and then drops down to 40 and then dies. So yeah, we've had a change. Thank you, Bill. I must admit now I'm sort of the same trouble is when you do get assistance from people in the audience so to speak when you succeed that thing me jig down there looks bad when you succeed in getting through a step you kind of feel like you're a little bit lost to take the next step now those resistors there are looking pretty bad let's see if any of them are important Yeah, well certainly yeah, the corrosion is pretty damn close to the CPU. Okay, resistor in the middle. It's you. 1v2. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, you. What are you? Nah, you're just a voltage ref divider. Okay, what about the bottom two? You're feeding 1v8 reset L? Yeah, maybe. On the very bottom one. The 
button the AV menu hold key. Uh, yeah, Rodrigo, so the one V8 reset was that second one, I think. We'll have a shot at just cleaning those up, but yeah, the whole board, pretty much every part has been touched one way or another. I believe this was a ocean, um, an ocean victim. Atlantis tried to claim back its iPhone. Yeah, everything, everything's taken a hit around here. Very few parts that don't look like they've gone through hell. The air conditioner is messing with my fume hood in a bad way. No pad there. Okay, <laughs> full board reflow. Yeah, why not? The only reason why I'm going for those caps at the moment is I'm not sure how important they are, but they are reasonable sized ones and I'm a little worried that it could be possible too that if they're not there, maybe it's enough for the voltage to have too much ripple in it. But at this point I'm down to one cap anyway because the pad on the other one died. Yeah, I don't know what you mean about the bad resolution. I'm pumping out at 1080, so it's probably YouTube's fault. Oh, that's a trace from another line. Oh, I hope I didn't break that. Okay, I've got to turn this swing off. Right. I think I must have got this board around about four, easily four years ago. It was one of the very first ones that came in that left me a little bit unsure as to what to do. It was definitely before I even knew about Lewis. Or Jesse for that matter.
I'm just seeing if. Hmm. All right, looks like I didn't ruin things too much. That'll be these two VCC main caps. So, yeah, probably really don't need them. I mean, they are 10 microfarad though, so it is, they're not subtle. Yeah, they're not like just little puff caps, they're pretty decent. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for my box of caps. Oh, not caps, back, box of boards. There we go. Uh. Rob, what? Where's. There's. I don't see any Lewis around here. I'm not Lewis. Come on, Duke. Alright, uh, you guys all suffering resolution issues? I'm uploading at 6 mega. Uh, yeah, 6 megabit. So if you got resolutions, then I don't know what to say. Hang on, is this... It's definitely where these tweezers are nice. I guess what this means, this one's been a train wreck as well. Not as bad as the other one. That ground plane sucking up all the heat. Yeah, you should be able to get up to ten eighty. So was Lewis in the channel or was that just people stating that they're here because they're trying to jump away I'm thinking if I'm boot looping is there a chance now I've got a short back again or something has come in to become shorted Ooh. oh I just mentioned him but I only mentioned him because I thought I saw someone say something about him Uh, Ainsley, yeah, I probably am going to have to make some adjustments with my... Okay, that's my anti-rollback EEPROM. Let's try and not destroy that. We might clean up our TriStar. Check, check microprocessor joints. I think it'll be a little bit difficult. Freaking train wreck. Oh, right, okay, fine, fine. Gee. Maybe my wife is right. Maybe I do say a lot of things that I don't remember. jumping off for
Oh, the LG V10 had boot loopers used due to cheap solder with the microprocessor joints cracking and stuff. I think, um, what is it? I swear Doc Vault was going on about how he had to fix a whole bunch of those. I could be wrong. Rob, do you remember Doc Vault going off about how his uh, boss or something bought something like a hundred of these phones and they all had processor faults? I could be wrong, but I seem to have some recollection of something to that effect. Uh, let's see. Everything is rather disorganized, more than usual, I should say, because I mean, I know I already am generally a disorganized person. But last night when I came in to start on the air conditioner, I just simply shovel armed or, you know, just swiped out everything on my bench and didn't give two hoots. As a consequence, there's a great big mess now, more than usual. I mean, it was a while ago, definitely a while ago. I remember he was getting something, he was getting a pretty decent uh, recovery rate on him. I mean, he does some crazy stuff, that guy. Repairing things I wouldn't even dare consider touching. Okay, yeah, let's get ourselves a TriStar. I could just pull one from another phone, but... No. I mean, TriStar is a comparatively cheap. Comparatively. Oh, that reminds me. Where do I put my TriStars? Not sure where my normal box is, but... Uh, let's see... The bag that I put the CD20... Oh, they're my TriStars. And they're the first bag on the top of the package, too. Where'd you get the AC from? I got it just from the local um, local shop. They gave me a good deal. I was happy with it. I think they were normally about 550 Austra uh, 450 Australian or something. No, that doesn't sound right. 550 Australian. They dropped it down to 499 for me. And out here, that, that's pretty good going. Hey, old Steely. Ah. Okay, now get my orientation. Okay, in and away from the NAND. Good O. Wrong one. I don't know, Lewis, if I can get people to unsubscribe from your channel. Why the hell would you want people to unsubscribe from your channel? I mean, don't you want your million so you can get your quarter of a million a year? You want to be rich? got to be rich. Nothing else matters in life. You have to be financially rich. People saying there are other forms of richness, that's just a cop-out for the fact that they're not rich financially. I suppose I better put the other parts that are around that TriStar back on too. And that just settled down. Yep. I agree with the anti-socialist thing you just said. Oh well, there you go. Well, there's no need to cover the NAND. I mean, the thermal mass required to get balls to pop out of this sucker 
is probably two to three times the mass, the amount of energy you need to get that to sit down. It is quite difficult to, um, it's quite difficult to get those balls to pop out until you don't want them to pop out and then your balls pop out. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense, Paul. Okay, start transferring useless parts. You don't need to get rich to be successful. Well, yeah, like I said, depends on your definition of what success is. I mean, if you want a good relationship, things like that, sure, great. But at the end of the day, money is like lubricant. And life can be very difficult and painful without money. It's not essential, but it sure helps. Do the little bastards first. These little puff capacitors really aren't that needed. I'm just putting them on for the sake of doing the right thing. Jeez, Rules. Man, you really know how to go to the dark side of the topics, don't you? Uh, what happened to our interview, Lewis? I was there for you, and you were not there for me, Lewis. I was waiting, I was ready, and you were not there for me. I had to go to someone else. I had to rely on me, and I went and did a live stream. And I'm going to look like Princess Leia when I do that live stream, uh, not the live stream, interview. Because I've got to wear my special headphones so I can actually hear what you're saying. No headphones, and I won't understand anything. Oh, you're going to stuff me up, aren't you, you little thing? Yeah. That's all right, I know. You're busy playing with your little quad. I understand. You gotta have some. You gotta have some me time. Where did I stick that little part? Raging at you has made me forget where I put that part. Oh, there it is. But I get it, you know, you got you got dozens of people trying to get your attention all the time. Let alone some crazy dingo dingo man. Reflow you bastard. Oh jeez, you took your time. God damn it, you made me knock my tri star. Good thing TriStar's got big balls and it can handle being knocked around a bit. Uh, looks frustrating. Working on iPhones is painful. Uh, Lewis, this is an iPhone 6 and yes, it's, it's painful and it's pointless. Actually, not really. It's quite profitable here still. And there's corrosion everywhere on this board. This board took a swim in the sea. Well, how the heck did... Oh, did we find out who ran over an L? Let's see... No, it's not. It's not a hundred dollar phone here. Rob, I will catch up with you in chat. So be there or be square. Lewis, the story behind this is that it's a shame board. 
shame board being one that many years ago I tried to recover and I have a feeling I probably caused more damage than I repaired and so I've kept it ever since I was never able to get the data off it this was prior to knowing about you and Jessa and uh, or Jason for that matter like I'd send it to Jason but no one was around so it became my shame board because I fairly sure I made it worse Okay, we're holding 129 steady, so we're not really getting anywhere. Let it cool down a bit. It's interesting that the first board that I did, which was a real difficult one, it went for a swim in some pool over in Asia. It was an old boss's phone of mine. I, I've, I've basically always had very good bosses, but this one in particular was from my African days. And, yeah, his phone, it was an iPhone 5S, I think it was. Went for a swim in the pool. And at the time that I got it, I did not have any of this equipment. And it sat around for a good year and a half. And then one day I've decided I'll have a crack at it now that I had the new stuff. And lo and behold, I actually got the data off it, which was a shock. Looking back now, it was a bit of a beginner's luck situation. Because if I look back at it now, knowing the damage and knowing the success rate of this sort of work in general, it was definitely a real sort of beginner's luck blessing. So I got the data off, but um, yeah, that was it. He was pretty happy. Pictures, of course. Yeah, let's see if this is improving on the situation. But yeah, it was one that stuck around. Power. I have a feeling this one's probably cactus. Uh, we're back to 86 and doing nothing. I think I might ultrasonic this and then just have a look at it later. Uh, I need to go off and do other things. It's getting late in the day. I've got yard work to get done. I've got shopping to get done. I've got uh, business work to get done. As in, you know, administration work. So, thank you all for dropping in. Oh, and I've got to get that customer their phone back too. Uh, it looks like the shame stick stays for another day. But I appreciate you dropping in. So, uh, thank you very much for the support. Like, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you're going to thumbs down, make sure you really make your mark and thumbs down twice to know to let me know that I did real bad. And, uh, well, we've got the air conditioner, so everybody's happy. I'm happy. Uh, let's see. And uh, hopefully, in the near future, Lewis might actually give me an interview, though I don't know what he's going to be asking me that we don't already know about, other than maybe do I have a preference for furries or bronies, I don't know, I haven't thought about those questions. But uh, thank you all again, and until the next video, you'll take care, I'll see you later.